God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, close yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Amen.
song says, here I am to worship. said I'll never know
Let's thank our wonderful praise team, setting the stage for an evening of important business, but also calling forth the Spirit of God to be among us. Will the body please come to order and take your seats as soon as you can? We have a full agenda. We're going to get it all done tonight. I'll ask Mr. Uh, Gordy Yoakum to kind of start heading toward the stage. And as we prepare for the evening, um, I'd like to recognize that we are, today is the 14th of June. That's Flag Day. Did you know it was Flag Day? Flag Day. And Flag Day is a symbol of our country, the United States of America. And we are still one nation under God. So for my opening prayer, I'd like to pray for our nation. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the freedom we enjoy as American citizens. And we thank you that this is our flag day and we honor our flag. But most importantly, we honor the memory of those who sacrificed our lives for our country. And we honor that this is a country that is a nation under you. And may we strive every day of our life to continue shining the light of God in this country. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We are going to begin with a statistical report by Mr. Gordy Yoakum, who has worked hard every year preparing some information for us that's important for us to understand, but some of it we need to be working on. Well, Bishop, Cabinet, and Conference in general, thank you. It's, uh, it's my pleasure to present the statistical report again. And I don't know whether it's better to give a statistical report on a full stomach or an empty stomach, but we, we, are, we are where we are. We so. are where we are. <laughs> anyway, um, the way I handle this is uh, I get the data from the GCFNA, from the forms that you all fill out, and I download all of that stuff. I pull it down. I throw it in my wife's squeezing art, and out comes there's six buttons on there, and out comes six statistical categories that hopefully are trends on, um, on, on how we're doing. And uh, we have worship and attendance, we have Sunday school attendance, we have Christian formation groups, missions received by profession of faith, and benevolent missions. And I truly really try to look at trends. I think looking at one year at a time doesn't really tell you anything. It's sort of so what. But I've got these trends that go back to 2008, and um, it, it shows some interesting, um, interesting statistics. So have we got a, there we go. Okay. What, what we see here is the first category is worship. I gotta flip my chart here. Worship uh, attendance. Okay, excuse me. And um, as you'll see from when, I, when I queue up the next slide here, we do have continued declines in all districts. Um, and that's something which is common when I talk to my friends of all denominations. The uh, membership and the attendance is on a slow slide, if you will. But on the bright side, 38 churches reported greater than a 10% growth, and that's good. Okay. And 86 churches, which is, I guess, roughly 20% of the churches that we have, grew attendance. It was a positive change. So um, if you give us the next slide, please. Now, this graph here, um, I, I got very depressed when I saw this. This is taken right off of the uh, GCA website, and I took my data and compared it to theirs to make sure that their data was right. So, uh, and it is, so is mine. Uh, the very top edge, you see the membership uh, starting, in this case, from 2006, and the membership uh, is trending down from like 124,700 down to about 96,000. And the bottom bars are the attendance, uh, the average weekly attendance. And um, over on the far left, you'll see 50,600. And we're going down to about 34,324. So that's a very steady um, decline. And I got real depressed when I saw that. I just, I hate to sit up here and, and keep talking year after year about how this is going down, but it is. And so I put this chart together I couldn't do this anymore, sat down, turned on CNN, and I got more depressed by listening to more bad news. So I said, enough with CNN and cable news, I'll come back and to my charts again here. So um, we, we see that, and just sort of keep that trend in mind, and um, there is a little bit of good news coming here, so, but I wanted to put that as a sort of an initial backdrop that we sometimes focus on a little, too, a little bit more too heavily here. 
The next slide is your average Sunday school attendance. And this shows a decline as well. But the thing that's interesting, 2016 and 17, it slowed up. And there's actually a little bit of, a, of an increase for 2017. And I think that's really good news, OK? Uh, it's something to be thankful for. 2010, I'm not sure what happened in 2010. Well, I know what happened. Somebody reported Sunday school attendance. I know who you are out there. And your church isn't big enough to hold that number of people. So I think there was a data error. But your data error is now permanently etched. So in any event, you could knock out 2010 as being a bit of a, um, an oddball there. So th that's the first piece of kind of a little bit of good news here. Next slide, if you will. There we go. Christian formations. Now, this is children, youth, and adults included. Now, I'm going to change the second line. It's a participation trend, not rate. That trend is sort of similar to the attendance. It goes down a bit. But I did notice that the prior years had begun to level off a bit. Uh, so it's not really, um, I guess the numbers are still a bit more robust than the attendance. So um, in that, there's some positive in that. In other words, the percentage of attendees involved in Christian formation groups hasn't dropped at the same rate that we're finding that the church attendance here. So um, I'll start off with a little saying here. The more people that stay are the more people that play. OK, so that means those that are involved, those that, are, that, that stick around, attend church, are doing a little bit more. Uh, so between 33,000 and 36,000 participants in Christian formation groups. So you know, my frown from the first slide is still a frown, but it's starting to come up just a little bit. Um, the very next slide we have is missions. Uh, volunteers in missions and other teams, plus all the people that are reached. So those that give and those that get. Um, there's no real declines in this area. Um, and here's, here's an interesting thing. Half a million lives touched every year by this. In the past six years, though, it's grown by 250,000 people. Now, for all the mathematicians out there, that means we've doubled it. If we've gone from 250,000 to 500,000 in simply six years, we're doing something right. So you're still keeping this decline in, in, in church attendance in mind when I say all this. There's a reason why I'm asking you to do that. Um, the next slide, received by profession of faith. Now, this area is, 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 is trending down a little bit. Um, let's switch to the next slide where there's a graph on this one. Let's turn, change slides, please. There we go. Um, this, the good news here is that this decline has been, has started to level off a little bit. So much as we see the negative news in the attendance, I, I really hate to just keep harping on attendance, but there are other good things that really come out of uh, this whole thing as we get into it. So as we, we take a look at the, those that we're taking in by profession, uh, I, I track the profession of faith. This is profession and reaffirmation. This is what the GCFA tracks. But it's still probably pretty close. So we're starting to see some leveling there. Uh, or I hate to use the word right-sizing, but given the attendance drops, this may be where this particular trend is going to start locking in. So um, I'm going to consider that to be, to be some hopeful news here, that that trend is not dropping here. Um, next slide, please, on benevolent missions. Uh, these are amounts given to the United Methodist Church and other causes outside of the treasurer. Okay, and we've been giving between 3.1 and 4 million dollars. This is an upward trend. This is actually going up. Um, to give you an example, in 2017, we actually got $115,000 more than the year before. So again, uh, we're doing a lot more with maybe perhaps fewer people. And I think that's probably encouraging. But still, I couldn't get that first slide out of my mind. So I said, I need to go see a pastor about this. And then I realized I'm married to one. And since she's retired, she's home a little more often. So I went to her and I said, will you please help, try, try to help me reconcile in my mind what's going on here? And she said, go read the book of Judges in the Bible. I said, the whole thing? And she says, we'll start on chapter 6. 
And so I did that. And things, my outlook really started to change when I got done reading that. Although the numbers are trending down in some key areas, they do provide encouraging information in other key areas, suggesting that committed church members are actually doing more with their gifts of time and money. I think we can take comfort in reading the story of Gideon in the book of Judges. In this story, the Israelites had run into disfavor in the eyes of the Lord. And I'm probably saying something you all probably know, but I'm trying to tie this story in with what I see. Um, they'd begun worshiping idols such as Baal, the god of sun and fertility. But as the people of Israel were being overrun by the Midianites and seemingly losing hope of reclaiming their harvests, okay, an angel appeared to Gideon, directing him to go out and save his people, stating that the Lord would be with him after, of course, disposing of the Baal idol. But when Baal never showed up to take issue with Gideon, then that proved to some of the people that the Lord God was the real deal. But Gideon, a bit cowardly and self-centered, enlisted help of many men um, and sought multiple signs from God that he was with him. But the Lord told Gideon his army was way more than you needed. You have way too many people to do what really needs to be done. Only 300 of the most earnest men were needed to drive out the enemy. And as long as these men did exactly what they were told, only a small band, a small band of warriors, and they used trumpets, pitchers, torches, and they frightened the enemy into fleeing. And swords weren't even needed to do this. Okay, this story shows that even with smaller numbers, much can be accomplished by putting one's faith in God. Just as Gideon and his small army accomplished God's purposes, we too can take heart that despite declining numbers, if we allow God to work through us, we can accomplish some pretty good things for the kingdom of God. And I think some of the later slides I showed brought that out. Even with fewer people, we're able to do at least as much, if not more. So that's my report. Thank you very much for your hard work and good analysis. I think there's always more we can be doing. And I encourage you to keep reaching out to people. And let's get our baptism numbers up. They always seem to be stagnant with like barely 800 baptisms this year out of 413 churches. What is that about? You know, baptize one. If everybody baptizes one, um, I think we'll have better numbers next year.